What about Patrick Mahomes? Yeah, somebody... Is he on your fantasy football league? <laughs> he's he's in the league, yeah, but he's not on my team. Oh, you couldn't pick or you didn't pick? I didn't pick because I had the third pick and he went like pick eight. Oh. So I, that's how that works. You don't just get to choose. You have to do it as if you were a team drafting your players and whoever's available is the ones you get. Yeah. I've never done fantasy leagues. Well, there's that, but there's also uh, auction leagues, which means you have a specific dollar amount, not real money, but everybody has a sp- like $100. Like your budget. Right. And you can auction. So if you want a player, you can spend as much as you want, but then you'll have a certain amount for the rest of your players. Um, that's not what kind of league we have. The so normal league is... Well, there's more than one kind of league? Oh, yeah. There's all different kinds of Wow. Leagues. But normal leagues are... You ten to twelve teams, mm-hmm. and so first pick gets the best player, right? In their mind, and then, right. do, 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 and then it's a snake draft. So the tenth team gets the eleventh pick and goes back. Got it. And it's okay. It's kind of like that. And is the real money on the table for these things? Yeah. So our buy-in is I don't know. Last year it was fifty. I don't know if it went. And it's pooled. Yes. Basically. So basically, the winner, um, the winner gets. I think in our league, I got like five hundred dollars. Was the pool? That's cool. Um, a lot of leagues. Some That's leagues fun. have a lot more money. Yeah, I, under- I understand. Some leagues the aren't fun money of, at all. The fun of that is it goes way beyond just rooting for a particular team. Yeah, There's it, so many things you can pay attention gives to. Gives you a lot more interest in other games. Yeah. None of you care about what I just said. Nope. Hey, Josh. Welcome back to our stupid Rex of Corner. I'm Rick. You can follow the Instagram, Twitter for more GC content. Thank you to our sports on Patreon. Follow us for your Twitter account, subscribe to the like button. And this is a video that dropped a few days ago, and this actually goes the most underrated space program in the world. And so this actually goes into the space program, not obviously just their their uh, moon mission, obviously. Well, and simultaneously, they just did something with the sun in the same week. I saw something about them going to the sun, yeah. which was a weird title. Yeah. I was like, there's no way you're yeah. going to, you can't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do they do with the I, I don't know. It just had something to do with getting close and doing some kind of a study of the sun. Okay. Which they which was basically you can't go to the sun. Right. In case you didn't know that. Right on the. That's the kind of knowledge you get here of the moon landing. Fun fact: you cannot go to the sun. Which did you see the super blue moon that was up in the sky? No. Yeah, it was gorgeous. It's a su- It wasn't just a blue moon. It was a super blue moon, which happened once every ten to twenty blue years. Blue moon. And I was looking through the telescope, and you know what I saw up there? I could see the Indian. Uh, lunar module that had landed mm-hmm. and right next to it was SRK spreading his arms. Yeah, that makes sense. Here we go. In 63, officials with India's space agency were still moving rocket parts around on bicycles. And now they're on the south side of the moon. They successfully landed a spacecraft on the moon. This accomplishment was especially emotional because four years ago in 20- Wow, I thought there'd be more information. Me too. I'm very disappointed. Four years ago, in 2019, a software glitch caused its predecessor, Chandrayaan 2's lander, to crash into the moon's surface. So they were nervous this time. Understandably so. They were probably fact, nervous the first time. That much confident because uh, as a person who has been doing in this, uh, in this domain for 36 years, I know there are thousands of things. Any of that could uh, can anytime go wrong and derail. The pressure was immense, admitted the director of the center that spearheaded the construction of the spacecraft. The amount of effort is tremendous. The smiles that filled the room were a testament to the resilience of the Trondrion 3's team, who navigated the Vikram lander to avoid all those potholes to come in for a soft landing. This footage has been super sped up. The rover Pragyon then rolled out of the lander's belly mm-hmm. to begin exploring the lunar surface. And we became the first Incredible. country to go to the near to the south pole of the moon. Astronauts are racing to get to the lunar south pole as spacecraft have detected water ice there, which mm. can potentially be extracted and turned into drinking water, food, and rocket fuel. Yeah. NASA desperately wants to land humans there before China. I don't want uh, China to get to the south pole first with humans and then say, this is ours, stay out. While China has succeeded Russia, no one should say that rival to American influence in space. But they will. India is emerging as a force to be reckoned with. India's small and scrappy space agency is growing more small and scrappy. (laughs) It started off small by launching satellites after establishing its space program in 1962, four years after NASA, under the leadership of the late physicist Dr. Vikram Sarabhai. The lunar lander Vikram was named in his honor, Mm. a tribute to his vision, which he described this way. 
There are some who question the relevance of space activities in a developing nation. To us, there is no ambiguity of purpose. We must be second to none in the application of advanced technologies to the real problems of man and society. Initially, India Space Agency, which later evolved into ISRO, collaborated with multiple countries. That iconic photo from 60 years ago is part of an American-made rocket. Transporting parts by That's bike a great photo, is a testament to India's resourcefulness. When I mentioned on X that the Chandrayaan-3 budget was less than that of the movie Interstellar, <laughs> Elon Musk replied, good for India. By the way, let's connect on X. I'm at NewsThink. The link is in my description. India's space agency has always worked on a shoestring budget. While NASA's Mars probe mission, MAVEN, cost $671 million, <laughs> India's Mars probe mission, Mongolian, cost just $74 million. By the way, India became the first country to successfully reach the red planet on its maiden voyage in 2014. Mm -hmm. The entire Indian Department of Space Budget for 2023 is $1.5 billion for both civilian and military use, a fraction of NASA's $25 billion budget or the U.S. Space Force's $26 billion budget. To be fair, NASA's much larger budget is a reflection of its size and accomplishments. They've got astronauts in orbit. The U.S. is the only country to have landed astronauts on the moon, albeit the last time was 1972. And they're now trying to send humans back to the moon and one day to Mars. Although the U.S. spends more on space as a percentage of GDP than India, compare America's 0.28% to India's 0.04%, it's much less than what NASA spent during the glory days which was over 4% of the total U.S. budget. For India, doing more with less is possible because of its cheap labor market, where aerospace engineers might just earn $1,000 a month, which is not even minimum wage in America. Yeah, it's a, it's a, a dollar to rupee relation. The used is also developed in its own country rather than being imported. It used to rely on the French space agency, CNS, to supply parts for its liquid-fueled rocket engine, Vicus, which powers various ISRO launch vehicles. But now the engine is made in Mumbai by the company Godridge Aerospace in a suburb of the sprawling city. Hmm. It takes about five months to create an engine, and then it's shipped to Isro by road at a careful pace of 20 kilometers an hour <laughs> or 12 wow. miles an hour, taking two weeks to go from yeah. Mumbai to Isro's Vikram Sarabhai Space Center in Tiruvannamthapur. Another way India keeps its space agency light and nimble is through shared launches. Think rideshare with other countries in the space industry. Uber for space. Payloads, <laughs> usually satellites, hitch a ride on a single launch, reducing India's overall costs. ISRO has had commendable successes until now, but landing on the moon has marked a monumental leap for the nation, showing its capabilities on the global stage. We will be now looking at putting the man in uh, space, putting a uh, spacecraft around uh, Venus and landing a craft in uh, Mars. India has actually never sent people to space on its own. An Indian astronaut, or a Vyomanaut, as they call them, flew to orbit on a Soviet rocket in 1984. India is preparing its first astronaut mission called Gaganyaan, which aims to send three astronauts into orbit on its own spacecraft. But the mission has faced delays, and ISRO hasn't announced a date for it. As the curtains drew to a close on the 20th century, the Cold War space race gave way to a new race. The U.S. remains the dominant player, with private companies, notably SpaceX, shaping the landscape of space exploration. China is watching SpaceX's every move and aims to create its own answer to SpaceX's fully reusable rocket Starship. Russia now lags behind, symbolized by its lunar lander crashing into the moon mere days before India's triumph. India may have been late getting into the game, but it has proven it has plenty of potential. We'll continue to do our best and make our flag fly, ISRO's hmm. as well as India's flag fly high. Thank you very much. One of my favorite parts of a successful mission is seeing the team's reaction. Absolutely. If you're inspired by what these engineers have achieved and want to develop similar skills or brush up on what you already know, Brilliant is the place to learn. Brilliant I don't think that's where they went. <laughs> <laughs> and you can learn math, I know it's your ad, but... <laughs> You can dive into their mathematical thinking course by seeing okay. fractions, cool. percentages, I think that's it. Yeah, I think that's it. Uh, I think that's it. Yeah. Uh, no, that's always one of my favorite parts of any. Well, any anything really, just like any achievement. Any achievement. Like, yeah. Like a, like a film achievement. Scene. Yeah. All the achievements. The filmmakers or the the people involved. Or, or, or a team that wins, and you watch the fans celebrating. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, especially with stuff with space that you they've literally spent 
maybe even a decade on this project alone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is their baby. It's and huge. They, like they said, there's a thousand ways it can go wrong. Uh, and also said, uh, the, the fact that she said India was late to the game. I wonder why. Mm hmm. No, we know why. It was England. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then England, England has the audacity. I say that as a generality because it's been in the media, but there's some in England who have the audacity to tell India what they should or shouldn't do with their money. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Mind boggling. But, and I, I, I'm a big fan. You may, may have, if you've heard us talk about space things before. I absolutely celebrate love hearing about space exploration for the purposes of enlightenment and education and better understanding of the world and the potential of things that can be a potential help bringing it back to our world. Yeah. The thing that I don't like, and I've, I've voiced before about um, space programs, are the ones that are designed solely for either entertainment purposes for the wealthy or going out as Elon Musk has repeatedly said he wants to do, to find a viable place for us to live. It, those, those, to me, are the most extraordinary waste of time and resources that could be used for other more beneficial things. But, hey, can't be perfect. Oh, that's not going to stop. Yeah, no, it's not. We're always going to look farther, and as long as there's money to be made, people will make it. Yep. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately. There will always be something human beings of a particular ilk can figure out how to make money off Have of Have you ever wanted to go to space? <laughs> Putting aside the money costs and... Have you ever just had a desire to go to space? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Like if you had the opportunity and you didn't have to spend, you know, $400,000. Yeah, 100%. The most common way I've fantasized about it and actually have dreamt and sex with an alien. Close. Yeah. I have I would love to I prefer invitation, but abduction. Mm -hmm. To just be able to be in that atmosphere and have that happen is something I've long thought about. So yes, I, I would love you to, to be see probed? what else is out there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I've I was obsessed with space, especially as a kid. Yeah, it's, it's um, so I extraordinary. I an astronaut for a long time, and then I was like, Oh, did you? Cool. That's way too much school. Yeah, exactly. Too much school and too much math. <laughs> I don't want to do any That's of that. That's not going to happen. I just want to go to space, man. <laughs> I just, but, but I like, do. The but, fact that like there's nothing, because uh, a lot of people freak out the fact that there's nothing. I know. And I was like, no, that sounds amazing. Amazing. So like, amazing. I've laid on the grass. You know, I'm sure you've done this, where you lay on the grass at night, especially if you're away from the city where you can really see the sky. And you feel like you're falling into the sky because yeah. it's so expansive. But I wouldn't want to go, even if I didn't have to spend a penny, if someone gave me the opportunity to go on simply a excursion that was pure entertainment to go out and then come back, I don't I don't know that I would want to do that. Mm. My, my dream of it is to, like, if I were to do that, I'd want to go on the space station and be out there for a little while. Yeah. Not just go up and down. But you never will. Nope. <laughs> well, never say never. Well, you in, never know. In, in our lifetime, hey, no, you're not just going. You, it, you never know. Tom Cruise could cast us in a film that takes place on the space station. Tom Cruise has never been on the space station. He's going to be. <laughs> He's going to make a movie in space. He is. You don't know that? Fucking guy. That's his next endeavor is to make a movie that is done in space. Fucking guy. I yeah. Swear. Anyways, uh, go Tom. Obviously, congratulations. I'll be in it with you. Again. I'll be background on that one, buddy. Let us know. Um, if there's any other um, videos we can uh, react to via the space station um, or any other information we need to know down below. Just